the girls. Hi everyone, Truth or Girl Sonia here, and I'm with Aaron, Barbarian Rebellion. Hey. And um, I wanted to bring something to your attention. Horror Hospital, the most shocking photos and testimony from the Dawood Military Hospital scandal. So this, these are photos, and as they say, very shocking photos from a military hospital in Afghanistan, where, well, you know that the, the Afghan government is cooperating with the coalition forces, American military, uh, against the so-called, uh, the terrorists, right, the insurgents. And um, so when, when their military get hurt, and they, they go to the hospital, they want to go to the good, supposedly good American military hospital. When Afghanis get hurt, they pay to go to this hospital. Okay, and this is how they're treated. Uh, Aaron hasn't seen these photos. You guys should go and look at them in the article. Okay, here's some quotes from the article. It says, patients were lying in filth, in some cases starving and with grotesque bed sores. One patient was on the brink of starving to death. And then they show uh, pictures of untreated wounds, maggots coming out of the wounds, people with gangrene in their limbs. Um, the, the patient's bill of rights was ripped off the wall and shredded into pieces and left on the floor so they could paint the walls. And then the, the caption over one of the pictures um, says, the Auschwitz-like conditions at the National Military Hospital. Okay, so, you know, it, it's comparing it to Auschwitz, and, and some people um, take offense when the American military is compared to the uh, Nazi military. But um, what happened after World War II? Uh, Operation Paperclip? Operation Paperclip, yeah. They brought a bunch of Nazi scientists and such over to the U.S. to work for Team USA. So, obviously, this is really horrible, and it's a real shame on the American military. But the other thing is... Does this remind you of anything else? Have you ever seen something like this in a hospital? Hmm? This wouldn't happen in Canada, right? Well, it happens. Yeah? Does it happen? You seen people with uh, unattended sores in a hospital? Uh, no, I don't know if it's as bad as that, but... Like, he doesn't remember. Uh, Irene? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. She, she had, like... Yeah, she was, like, this, like, very obese girl in an electric wheelchair. And she had this sore on her leg, and she was in the hospital. She and uh, she she had, her leg was like pressing against the steel part of the chair. Her was, chair was broken. Her was electric just, wheelchair was, was broken, broken, and her and she's a big girl, like you said. Yeah, her leg was leg was off cutting, the chair. That's right. like pushing into the broken part of the chair yeah, yeah. day after day, and she had a big open wound on her leg, and we had to pad her chair. Yeah. And how could they not have known this? They had to. They have to bathe her. They have to help her go to the bathroom. They knew. Yeah, and yeah. they left her like that. And you know what? We came back up there a few months later and guess what she had? Do you remember what she had with her feet? He doesn't remember that either. But she had gangrene in her feet. Yeah, remember that? We went in the room. The whole room smelled. Okay, this happened in the hospital. That kind of neglect goes on here. And she's not the only one. That's just to give you an example. Oh, man, they're horrendous I mean they're not not as bad as that but like well maybe not on a, on a as a matter of routine no, but yeah. listen if Irene could be in the hospital with like open wounds and they damn well knew and they didn't do anything I'd say that whoever was in charge of that was no better than the people who left these Afghanis to to suffer from their wounds and actually there is a systemic problem in the hospitals in Canada sometimes I even wonder whether it's a part of a secret eugenics agenda to get rid of the useless eaters. So do I. So do I. Like they put you on a shit list, and then if you need care or, or an operation or stuff, they they give you like this doctor, and then he like pretends like you know in yeah, the consultation that he's yeah. gonna do something. They're interested in doing something, and then he gives you a follow up six months later. You come back six months later. It's the same thing again. They give you the it's run around. A, it's just like. Another follow up after a while. Here's a few Dilatas here, and oh, we'll have another follow up. And they just don't do anything. Yeah, they put you on waiting lists. Like he needed a surgery once, and they just put him on a waiting list. We called back to say, like, well, what's going on? What, what's going on with the the waiting list? And they're like, yeah, don't worry, you're on the list. Well, we came back, and he had not been put on the list. And then the second time, they said, oh yeah, we're putting you on the list. But then again, it turned out there was he wasn't on the list. The third time, we, we even. Well, he signed papers, yeah. and, and still nothing happened. I finally went up there and like talked to that doctor's secretary, <coughs> uh, 
herself and she looked in the computer I made her look and she's like no he's not on the list, yeah, he's not on the list. totally give you the runaround Duh. but anyway this, this happens a lot and and I want to draw your attention to this other article Alberta doctors bullied by bosses panel finds this is from February of this year and it says patients wait too long in emergency rooms and doctors dare not advocate for patients if they want to keep their jobs, according to a report on Alberta's healthcare system. And then later in the article, it says uh, the report that they did uh, comes a year after CBC News first broke the story of Alberta Health Services punishing doctors by withholding hospital privileges and canceling contracts for advocating on behalf of their patients. So. I just wanted to let you know, yeah, it's not in your head, like you, they really give you the run around, put yeah, you on yeah. the shit list or well, whatever, yeah. but they, they really is a big problem of neglect here. Yeah, but spread, why, because of budgeting? Spread, the eugenics movement is deeply embedded into the medical system. That's why we have Medicare in the first place. It's a big con job to have the government in control and administer over the Lord over everything that goes on in the hospital. So they. They, you know, they give plenty of equipment to cancer research, but if you want, yeah, which you know, is which doesn't cure anyone. Yeah, of course, it, that's a deadly you, treatment. Yeah, it makes things, a lot of money. Yeah, it's just a big money-making scam. Like, anyway, they don't care about. I, I call it health. commie care. You know, like like your Obamacare in the states is. You know, ours used to be good. It used to be good. Yeah, of it was course, back in the 60s. when the government. Uh, takes control of something that always ends up being corrupt. Well, wait, it was still good in like the 60s and 70s. We yeah, had it was good. good. Here. Yeah, and the government yeah. was in control it's, of it. It was still... Yeah, I know, but yeah, was, after a while, I didn't say right away, but after a while... like the Government got taken over by corporations more and more. Everything got deregulated, and we switched to private banks, and everything changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the situation we're in now. And you're in that same situation in the States, like getting Obamacare... Yeah, that's commie care for sure. It's going to maybe help a few people, but in the big picture, I think. Oh, commie care. Same as what we get, yeah. Oh, commie care. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> Anyhow, I just want to let you know what's going on at the hospital at, at Dowood Military Base. Disgusting. Uh, I mean, military hospital. And also what's going on right here in Canada. <sighs> Thanks. It's only going to get worse, folks. <laughs> Always the optimist. Thanks for uh, for listening to us, and we'll see you next time.